Hello everybody, so it's Captain Jen on the schooner Woodwind. We are in Portsmouth, Virginia. We just finished the Great Chesapeake Bay Schooner Race almost 12 hours ago. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this is Captain Nick on the schooner Brilliant. Hi, folks. It is such a privilege having you brought to us. One well, of the privileges all ours. Uh, it's great being here and what a wonderful event and a great gathering of um, wonderful boats and great people. Pleasure. Can I come aboard and show all our Nevin's Yard in City Island, New York, and designed by uh, Olin Seaver, a 22 year old up and coming naval architect. He shook the world with his website. Awesome. You know, Woodwind and Brilliant share a lot of the same characteristics. They do, they do. They're about the same size. Uh, your boat represents the era that this boat was built, so there are a lot of problems. They're both very fast and seaworthy boats. Are you 74 feet overall? 72 feet. 72, that's so, two feet. Yeah, we're 74 feet. But uh, this is really cool. I'll go into some more details about the relationship between Woodwind and Brilliant because it goes way back with my dad, as you know. And we go way back because Captain Nick was our captain in 1996. Yes. Any other years or just the season of 1996? 96 and summer 97, I think. Yeah, summer right. 97. Yep. He was one of my watch officers on the Schooner Race of 1996. Stories to come. Okay. <laughs> So, so up here we have the bow. Uh, she is originally built as a fast cruising yacht, very heavily constructed. She's a uh, teeth plant on oak frame. Uh, high tech 1932. This was skating yacht 1932. Bronze fastened, bronze strapping, and it was built to be able to sail around the world, although the owner thought that might not happen. But she also proved to have an excellent turn of speed, and in 1933, she crossed the Atlantic and actually set a record for a boat of this size. For a little under 15 days. Awesome. So, yep. Can our viewers hear over this? Can our viewers, you think, hear over this? Wait, they'll let us know, maybe, what comments. So I see something that we don't have on our boat. What's that? So these are our uh, our anchor chain springs, and the idea is that we have an all chain road, which gives us great anchoring capability, but there's not a lot of stretch in that chain. So these springs go ahead and take up the shock of the vessel coming up on our anchors and gear. The majority of the gear that you see on deck was built by Man the Nevins Manufacturing Company when they built the boat. This one was, was built by Nevins. All the winches that are on board the boat were all built by the Nevins boat yard. And, uh, different time when you didn't go to alternate manufacturer for the equipment, you went ahead and, uh, and you went ahead and made all your own stuff. What so, is this? That's one of our winch handles. And you notice right there, Nevis, number 14, so these are the winches that were built to, uh, to, to, to sell. Oh, we got to show, we gotta show the viewers closer. So Chris is behind the video of my phone. But well, look at this. That's what you do. Oh my god, and it locks! <laughs> this is so cool, how do you get it undone? You gotta press this button and turn up to get your printer card. <laughs> that is cool. Looks like a shoe horn. Alright, I'm learning so much about scooters. Alright. I love the bell, the bell is nice and polished. See that, John Barry? Just because I know John Barry will watch this. Oh, there's one more bit here. Oh, what else? There it is. Where is it? He <laughs> <laughs> went around. One more time. There it is. No, that was tight. Oh, no. It says brilliant 1932, right there. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. Look at these. So, so Brilliant is largely original. She's never been rebuilt. She's never been redesigned and improved upon. <coughs> she was also never one of those old rotten boats tied up to a pier in the, the 60s and the 70s. She's always been uh, well maintained. She was donated to Mystic Seaport in 1953 by Briggs Cunningham to be used as a used sail training vessel. And she continues on that mission to this day. We carry young people all summer long, five and 10 day missions of discovery. And she's been doing it for 65 years. Brilliant celebrated her 85th birthday this year. So we're very proud that she's still sailing. How old do you have to be to do one of those? 15 to 18 years old. What if you're the same height as a 15 or 18 year old? Then you can come. <laughs> and 
Now in the fall, when school gets out, we do adult programs, and this is part of what we do with the adult programs. We, we do our maritime events and races and, uh, and things that can support, uh, you know, some of the community that we, we stay with. Very cool. All right, so All right, so as we come back, one of the design parameters that uh, Walter Barnum, the, the man who commissioned the boat, presented with the young Olin Stevens was, he wanted ventilation to be a hallmark of the boat. Ventilation is what keeps wooden boats alive. And we've got butterfly hatches. We have the infamous Durade vent, which was actually invented by the boat that he had designed previous to this, to the Yacht Durade. So, so you can see that. And as we go through, you'll find that the boat is uh, very well ventilated and a lot of natural light down below. And that is one of the things that's kept brilliant alive for all these years. The only major repairs that we've had to have done to the boat is the deck wore out. And so many people had crossed the past this deck that we had taken about a half inch off and it really started to affect the uh, uh, state integrity of the boat. 20, 25 years on that boat. 25 years. 24, yeah. 24, so there you go. Yeah. So, yep. So as we come back there, the boat has been modernized a little bit in the sense that we are a certified inspected passenger carrying vessel. We also are a sailing school vessel. So we have modern propane systems for aiding in our cooking. That's our propane. We have life rafts, which help to keep us up to date with the modern Coast Guard standards. Uh, we are a solace equipped vessel, as well as a sailing school vessel. <laughs> we have wonderful earrings available for the guests and sailors. <laughs> <laughs> I love all this old stuff. And like an old traveler, huh? Yeah, that was a modern one. They put that on about 1945. Wow. <laughs> that, is that when you went to um, Marconi Rig? When was that year? So, so, Briggs Cunningham bought the boat after the Second World War. She was a picket boat during the Second World War, stationed off the coast with a machine gun and a radio to warm up the submarines. Then after that, Prince Cunningham bought her and he wanted to race her. So he had her reconfigured a little bit and he did some additions. He did the traveler, he heightened the mast. He had the mast made longer. These are the original spars on School of Brilliant. And, uh, and then what he donated to the seaport in 1953, that is when she went to the Marconi Rig Maine. The seaport felt it was a little safer to have Marconi and not have that gas swinging around a lot uh, when you're trying to sit and strike safe. Is this where the old bridge was? That's so cool. Yeah. These are oh, the original maps. So cool. Oh my god. And what are they? What are they made out of? You might have said. These are all thick spruce maps, and they're actually laminated spars. So they're glued together pieces of wood that are then uh, fit and measured and so on and so forth. Oh, so like our ribs and stuff like that on our boat yes. are laminated. Yeah. Cool. All right, we share something else. There you yeah. go. There you go. Exactly. All right. I love your honey. Yeah, we do too. Just stay dry. <laughs> this is where I'm going to be at the surgery. <coughs> Just tell my dad. It'll be great for the party tomorrow too, because you know, everybody wants to come over to Brilliant. Yes. Oh, look at this. So this is the original cockpit. We have photographs of the boat being built. Here's our 1932 <coughs> binnacle. Oh, um, the people are into to, the compass, yes. We need to polish. It's been a wet day, so... <laughs> That could be this afternoon's activities. Uh, but uh, again, this is largely original. You can see the original winches, uh, the travelers and equipment back aft. Um, so that's, I don't know, you have any questions about that? Yeah, how do, you, how do you drive this thing? So, well, we've got, uh, we got a wheel. <laughs> and so, but one of the things that's uh, interesting for a lot of folks is they get on here and they say, why is the wheel backwards? Because they're so used to automobiles and modern equipment, and even modern yachts. If you look over on uh, on Woodwind, you can see that her wheel is in front, is behind the pedestal and faces aft. Whereas on Brilliant, you stand beside rather than behind the wheel. And most of that is just because of the mechanical connections to the rudder post. That's brilliant. <laughs> yes, it is. So basically, the standard pose would be here or here or. If you're young and limber, you could sit here in the center seat. Oh, Try it. See if that works for you. Oh, wait, it's a wet seat. Ooh, <laughs> wet seat. <laughs> Look at the visibility. Oh, man, this is so cool. I'm booking a trip on this boat. Okay. Love to have you anytime. I anytime. might stow away on the way back up to <laughs> Connecticut. Right? You guys are going to back up to Connecticut? Yeah, we leave Monday morning for Connecticut. So we got a six day trip planned for the return. So, okay. So we're going to go down below here. This is the main companion way. Uh, Jen, if you can face the ladder when you go down, we'd rather not have you fall down and go bump in the bottom. Okay, okay, maybe you can start showing so you don't have to show me anything. 
I've learned the hard way. <laughs> wow. Oh, no, this is cool right here. So this is the different rigs that Brilliant has had. That's right. The one on the left is her original rig configuration. She, you can see that she has a, a top mist on top of the main mist. She's gaff rigged on both the fore and the main. Uh, you can see she's got a very large general jib there. And then on the right hand side there uh, is the rig that we sail with today. You can see the heightened rig, uh, the Marconi main, um, and, uh, and they're both setting the same sails with the exception of that, that jib there. Um, also underneath it, you can see the plaque that, re that documents her uh, crossing the Atlantic in 15 days back in 1932. Also the fingerprint smudge right <laughs> on there. <laughs> now, uh, so I see the angulometer. Uh, angle, well, the, the kids call it a linometer. A linometer. Yeah, what so did you see with that on your schooner race? Uh, I wasn't really looking at it that close, to be honest. But uh, we've, seen, we've seen 20, 25 degrees at times. Look so. at this. Wow, you could be like... Seven feet tall. We, we have people who come up to us at the seaport and they say, well, how many people fit on there? We say, oh, a dozen people. And they say, well, where do they fit? And they, well, they all fit down below. There's a lot of boat below the waterline. Um, this is the main salon. This main salon is basically the exact same it was in 1932. And so this is our sort of our living room. We have, uh, these also extend out into bunks when we're, when we're bunking at night. They slide out the oh. stuff. But, Eight, ten people around this table to eat. There's another leaf that fills in there. Much to the light, you notice our water pitchers are on this table because the table is gimbal. And no matter what, pitchers will not fall over as long as somebody doesn't mess with them. So cool! Oh my god. <laughs> so, wow, go. I'm so glad you're doing this with me. I think people are really going to love this. Wow. All right, That's so this, cool. was, uh, this was the original master's cabin. The, uh, the, the boat was originally a yacht, so this would have been... Uh, the captain and to reconnect and there we go and uh, so right now the captain and the mate take this bunk here okay cool and then uh, I like the dressers like and uh, yeah, yeah it's more you know we've got we've got two heads on board there's the one forward's a little uh, aft is a little small that's better than one <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're in the galley now this is basically here are the modern stoves originally she had a coal stove which was definitely a little bit stove is much more modern and and accepted by the coast guard so um, nice high fiddle all so you don't get thrown around in the in the galley as you go through behind you what a lot of folks think is the refrigeration is actually the engine space our plant and our engine room oh it's so warm so warm yeah and that's uh that's a detroit 353 that is a bus engine out of the public works department 72 they put that in and this is and a refrigeration compressor. captain our boat and and we were brand, we were still new to sailing yeah. um schooners so we learned from the best, and I could hear your voice last night as you were coming in and docking to us. And I'm like, the cadence of, you know, all that schooner, send one, hold one. Love it. Cool. And so this is your foremast, right? So the foremast is here, and then right behind you we have, which was originally an ice box, has been retrofitted, so we have uh, uh, coal plates in there. So it is a refrigeration system. But same hardware, same fasteners. Does and stuff come? These latch pretty well. Cool. There are nice divots in the mast, though, where this opens up. Yeah. But you know that's we all have. <laughs> that's yeah. right. And I see that this is the crew area, which you know. Right. This is the forecastle. This would have been the the, the crew area uh, for the professional crew working forward of the forward of the mast. And uh, and uh, there are four bunks up you in say here. Hi. Okay. This is this is an authentic <laughs> crew member. Um, <laughs> Kevin. Kevin. I Kevin. warned him. I told him. Uh, <laughs> Is that what you so, took your shirt off? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is the chain locker, and this is where all that chain that you saw on deck comes down. And this really helps to keep a lot of the weights uh, forward in the engine room. Uh, really, really help try to center the weight in the boat, so we don't have a lot of weight in the ends. Uh, she's she's not a she's not a very uh, pitchy boat. She doesn't hobby horse too badly. Um, and but, this uh, this wood right here. Yeah. What's that? So so that's the oak. Oak yep, deck okay. Beams. Yep. That's what it looked and like. And this is our main beam with our official number posted on it. Awesome. And this is the the galley uh, scuttle here, and this is the second egress and entrance. When we're doing our youth programs, they uh, in order to not disturb the cook, we ask the kids go up and down this ladder rather than trying to cut through the galley. Can uh, I ask a question that may you might not be able to answer, but it's okay. So this is net twenty eight. Yeah. I'll let you sneak in there. But your sail numbers I saw were twenty two. 
Do yeah. they ha do they coordinate or no? Not that we know of. We're okay. not really sure where the twenty two came from. We okay. assume it was just a number assigned to her in her early racing career. When she did a couple of Bermuda races early on, she's actually done the Bermuda race a number of times. Um, and won. She never won. She really? she placed well many many times. I've been telling but, lots of lies. Though. Yeah yeah. She never right. she never won the <laughs> Bermuda race. Um, but she did certainly because she was not built as a race boat. This is a heavy cruising boat. Well, and the she fact looks that like she, a race boat, and she acts like a race boat. <laughs> and you've got spinnakers. Yes. You've got golly wobblers. Yes. You've got uh, fishermen. We have two fishermen. Two fishermen. Because you know how long it takes to get a sail down and reset it on the other side. You Why really not do have that? two? So what? Okay. We drop. We drop one and reset the other one. All you got to do is switch the halyards over. All you got to do is switch to a stasial schooner and you won't have the problem. Right. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but you can't go so modern, you know. I but know. No. But you know what feels great, as you said, the ventilation. Like, it is so, it is so beautiful down here. This is awesome. Well, one of the challenges of sailing against you is because you've got a more modern rig is uh, a couple, three years ago we were re reaching and uh, we had all the light air sails up, remember that? And then you jived? Yes. And we went, oh, they jive. we got to follow. What took you about five minutes took us a half an hour. Because everything's got to come down. Oh, because you have motor. running backstays, We have running too. backstays. We had to strike the gala. We had to strike everything, get it down, jive the boat, put it all back up. I so. love doing these tours because I'm learning all of their weaknesses. <laughs> I learned Silverwind's weakness of having labels on things. All i got to do is sneak aboard, change the label. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is cool. Yeah. Oh, we're going to change all that. We're getting, the, we're getting oh, rid of the backstairs we're and we're, we're putting tracked fishermen up, I swear. We're doing jiving <laughs> duels. Oh, my God. Let me tell you, being in the schooner race this year, um, we were just neck and neck with summer wind. We, oh, my God, like three or four lead changes. It was beautiful watching you guys take off. It was oh amazing. Oh, my God. And then the schooner Virginia, we slowed him down for maybe six minutes. And they just passed to lured of us. It's a powerful boat and the perfect point of sail for her. Wow. Yeah. I know. You were the captain. And, like, they just beat your record. I think it was, like, 11 hours, 7 minutes. I was, I'm excited for them. They were, they were gone. It was, they, they, were they hooked gone. up. It was conditions very similar to this. She's a very good yeah. reaching boat. And uh, in those conditions, beam reach with, with everything set, she's gone. I remember looking at the AIS and I think she was holding a steady 11.3 11, 11 for a while. Wow. So. so, quick little like prices on a weekend, uh, like some of your adult trips, how much are those typically? Uh, they really vary depending on how many people. Our base rate of a charter rate is $1,800 a day. So, so it's a reasonable and cost. And that's six? And, well, no, that's for up to 12 folks. Oh, okay. So, so, but when you start adding the overnights and uh, and some of those, so the pricing varies. On some of the longer trips like this, we don't try to fill the boat. Even though we have bunkage for 12, 12 people on a six-day trip is a lot of people in a small space. So we reduce the number, and then the prices go up accordingly. But if, if you go to on our website, which is mysticseaport.org backslash brilliant, it'll list all the trips that we have coming for the fall season. And the and the youth seasons as well, and uh, and that breakdown will be there. Or you can always just call the seaport. So one little plug for them, other than all the plugs in the world of being the most beautiful schooner that is in this schooner race. I really do mean that. Um, number two is, I have more friends from doing the Mystic Seaport Youth Programs, whether it was on the Joseph Conrad, and then some of my friends that did it on the Brilliant. Um, I'm sure my friend Daryl is going to be seeing this, and um, she's just going to be just so tickled to see inside all over again. And she was aboard probably 25 years ago. Yeah. And, uh, or, no, oof, I'm, I'm not going to tell you how old Daryl is. She's going to kill me. I, but, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. One of the things that strikes, uh, strikes us is how many times in a week people will come up to us on the boat and say, I sailed on this boat in 1962. I was a Mariner Scout in 1971. Me and my family did a trip. It, it, it literally is a weekly event. It's amazing how many people this boat has touched. When I took over the boat and I saw your dad, your dad looked at me with glee in his eyes and he said, oh, brilliant, I've always loved that boat. It's one of my favorite boats. And just in, the, uh, just in this race alone, there are dozens of people who have sailed aboard this boat or crewed aboard this boat or been mates aboard their boat. A boat. So it's, it is amazing, and that's a, it's amazing the reach of a boat that's been sailing under the Seaport flag for 65 years. Well, to wrap it up, I know you know this.
story, but you may not know the story, is that Brilliant is the secret design of why Woodwind looks like she does. Is because I remember as a child, we always would sail on our 31-foot sailboat in Long Island Sound, and the second my dad would see Brilliant on the horizon, all of a sudden course change, no apparent reason, and we're just sailing along, and he's like, look who's coming up on the starboard bow or something, and sure enough, it'd be Brilliant, and he'd sail so far out of